The fellowship begins with a phenomenal chance to see and hear the collaborative spirit of Marcel Wander Studio in the Netherlands. Leading us will be Gabriele Chiavi, creative director of Marcel Wander Studio. The son of a diplomat, Gabriele has a wonderful history of living all over the world. This has helped shape who he is and his creative eye as well. A truly joyous surprise. We are joined by Marcel Wanders himself, a complete Dutch superstar. It is with great pride and pleasure I introduce you to Marcel and Gabriele. Beth, you're too kind, really. Always very very complimenting. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, to open this conversation. And uh, while thinking about what to say when opening it, uh, and later giving the word to Gabriela, I thought since we have a lot of students, I was thinking about my period in school. And there's one story that that is worth sharing. I remember we did the I think it was the third third class. And we did a uh, design for, for a company. And it was, uh, we, were, we were supposed to make a clock. And uh, I made my clock. And so at the end of the line, um, my teacher, Paul Schudel, he came to me and says, uh, Marcel, it's, it's really, really great design. It's, it's really smart. And uh, you really thought of the materials really well. And um, it's, 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 really, it's really good, but... Um, no, it's really good, Marcel. Really good, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's so ugly, <laughs> and and I was shocked. I I was I was really shocked. I was like, how can a man that I value so much be so ignorant and suddenly talk about something so irrelevant as beauty? Why, if 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 we are trained to become intellectuals, that you know, the shape. The future. Why can someone? I mean, I said, I'm not challenge me on something real, and I was, I was just like, I was really like uh, mean to him because of it. And, and it took me maybe two or three weeks. Then I thought, like, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe there's something there in what he says, right? Maybe this, it maybe be. So, Maybe beautiful is not so terrible. Maybe, yeah, maybe I should study it also a little bit. So on the side, right? On the side. So, so what I did in, in my room, I had at that point, most of them had a really small room. At that point I, in my life, I had a generous room. And so I took a gray blanket, a gray blanket with a nice purple rim around it. And I put it in the middle of my room. And uh, I started putting things on it because I thought I need a project to study beauty and I have to take away every sign of functionality or, or logic or reason. I just have to study beauty, right? So, so I put this blanket down and I thought I'm going to study beauty on this blanket. So I'm putting things there and, and, and study beauty. And for, for nine months, uh, it was all one whole year kind of, took one, one school year. So for nine months, that blanket was there. And uh, being passionate and almost aggressive to my, my, my willingness to learn, uh, at least every day, at least two to three hours, I was walking around that blanket and trying to find new things and putting them on the blanket and studying what was beauty. How, how would that just happen? And, and the, the most important thing that I learned after these three things, three, uh, nine months, uh, I, it's probably my biggest project I ever did. Nobody ever saw it. But so uh, the thing that I really learned, that nothing is just beautiful on its own. Nothing is beautiful on its own. But things become beautiful together, next to each other, or opposite to each other, or, or like in a distance to each other. Or, but they, they, they are never beautiful except together. And so I understood that the beauty really is um, the study of, of, of relationships. And, and I, I thought that's great because that's maybe also why it's so relevant. And, and I, I started to understand that these relationships are very 
uh, very large. You know, you can find them in everything and in, in every uh, in everyone and in, in projects. Uh, I start to see that you know, uh, it, it, it's the relationship. It, it, it's the collaboration between things that makes it work. I mean, it's easy to demand a material to do something, but if you collaborate with the material, if you listen to the material, it would, it, it will tell you. But you have to listen really well. You have to really put your ear to this material. The material will tell you what it can mean to the world. It will tell you it wants to dance. It it will tell you it, it wants to be caressed. And so materials, functions, and all these things are ideas and concepts you can collaborate with instead of demand things from them. And I think that is everywhere. If beauty is everywhere, then the relationships that underline them are always there. And they, they are better off in collaboration than in demand. And um, understanding this really well, for me, it was logic that, you know, at the end, you want to collaborate with the most interesting thing that there is on Earth, which is, you know, the human mind and uh, my own, but also the human mind of people around me. And it's, it's been my pleasure to, to, to found a studio with amazing people and to find some people between these people that have my career, that have changed my thinking, and that I've been, I've been grateful for for the rest of my life. And one of them is <laughs> this strange Italian next to me, who is now going to tell you something about what we do at the studio, something about his life. And hopefully it will give you some insight on what collaboration means to us and how it is important not only to us, but to our audience. Hope you're gonna enjoy it. This is me. Uh, have a we are vaccinated. Thanks, Marcel. He's, uh, he's around, but uh, I'm uh, very happy to be here today as a second and first today of this second session to speak to you. Uh, and I was very, very happy about the, the topic of this conversation, which is collaborations, because it's something in, within the B original concept, collaboration is really important to us as a studio. And today I want to show you quickly through all the universe of collaborations, what that means is so broad, it's so complicated. I think it's, it's so complex in a way that everything we do, uh, we do for people, we do for, we design for people, but everything that we we, we create or we do or we think is always connected to people. So collaboration, union and connection is fundamental for the work we do. And today I want to show you quickly through product design, art direction, video, all the word of, of collaboration as we mean it in the studio. So let me uh, quickly share, you, share with you a little presentation we have today. Uh, I think that the first world of collaborations and we say collaboration and humanism in design is because humanism, of course, is something that is the overarching umbrella of what we do. It's very, it's a very humanistic expertise. What we we design, we design for people. And mostly, I want to start uh, to to speak about collaboration within the first first core, which is Marcel on the studio. Uh, the first collaboration is that Marcel, as you saw, is Marcel, but we are a, a fifty uh, people studio in Amsterdam. And we create the beautiful work together. And each year uh, for, Mars, for Christmas, we create a family portrait, which is basically a portrait of all the studio members in different ways of photography. This one, this year was a Matrioska set with all the hand painted faces of all the team and one goes inside the other. And, and it's a beautiful gift we create for Marcel uh, but also for the studio. And it's been 10 years we celebrate each year the family portraits. And it's the first step into understanding that the studio is a, is a beautiful hub of gene, creative geniuses that helps us to create all the work that you see. Uh, and each year, of course, we take a different theme. This was a theme of uh, the Rijksmuseum book. That It's a book that we edited and produced that I'll show you later. So it's a book of a of a golden golden age from uh, 1600 in the Netherlands. And of course we dressed up all like in that period. And we did a beautiful print that we found in our studio. 
And each year we find another theme. This was the theme of this year. <laughs> of course, we couldn't come together. So we did an amazing portrait of being monsters home uh, in a Zoom call, but we adapted all the screen. As you see on the bottom, there is like make it beautiful, monsters. And each person really dressed up on his own. On the background, we have our projects and we created this beautiful print that we printed in the studio. And so it's, it's a way of celebrating the collaborative spirit that we have as a family, as a team uh, in, in, in our studio. Uh, another beautiful thing that Marcel came with with some years ago, 10 years ago, right? It's a birthday toast. Each, each year, each birthday person that has a birthday, it receives, it receives a toast. And each year this toast is a different material, different producer, different, different uh, finish. And it's the idea that a bread is made by a lot of grains, a lot of particles, and each one, each toast is part of the same bread. So again, the fact that uh, we are all the same bread and we all get a piece of the toast uh, for what we do in the studio. So, of course, collaborations, as you see, a quick, quick little snapshot of how we do projects, because each time with Marcel, we have teams coming together. We have product design, interior design, uh, graphic design in the studio. And uh, for some project, we really bring the, the spirit of the three teams together to collaborate within, uh, within projects. Uh, just quick, quick snapshots to, to show you how that happens behind the scenes. It's pretty special. I'd like to, to show you. I think this is the first time we really show a little bit more of uh, what we do internally. Um, and of course, collaboration in studio is not just about uh, work, but it's also a lot about fun. We have a studio boat, uh, pool tables. This is uh, images of a gay pride. Uh, we did the, the, the flag that we, you see is a flag that we did for the gay pride with the colors uh and with patterns of the studio we did in the stories and so it's it's really an amazing place to create and to come up with amazing stories and projects so so in a nutshell that was our little little home and now i want to uh, bring you through product design one of the three uh, the three things um the three core business we have in the studio is product design interior design and our direction so we'll see through those lenses what means to us collaboration. Product design, I have a few examples. One is Night Bloom from Yadro. And Yadro is a company, historical com company that does porcelain from Spain, from Valencia. And of course, we love to collaborate with companies that have a huge heritage, but also have still a lot of craftsmanship in the work they do. Because we love to bring heritage, we love to bring craftsmanship in the world of design today because design most of the times at least a few years ago uh, kind of tried to be a bit more minimalistic i would say or to forget the beauty of our past and we love to keep traditions alive we love to keep uh, the expertise that goes on from generation to generation to bring it back with new meaning so uh, yadro is one very good example where we did this lamp which was a porcelain handcrafted lamp and, uh, and we collaborate really closely with the craft people that from generation they do that work. And without them, we could not achieve what we do. I mean, we have the idea, we can have a vision, but the product is a combination of their expertise, our vision, and together we create an uh, amazing product. I'll show you a quick video about the, the collaboration that shows a bit what I'm explaining. Every inspiration has a natural origin, an origin that gives life to ideas, nourishment to grow, shaping beauty, bound by craftsmanship and connected with a human touch. A shape so unique in nature, delicate, wondrous, perfect. In a world of splendid color, the matte and unglossy can outshine a diamond.
Light from within radiates effortlessly, softly, connecting people around the table. Delicate petals make time stand still, creating inspiration all over again. A bouquet that delights allows beauty to be experienced in full. And of course, as you see, this is a final lamp and it's beautiful, ethereal, natural effect because of course, the work of the craftsmanship and the hands makes peace really looking that way. I think one of the really most uh, amazing experiences of working with, uh, in, my, in my work and our work as designers is the enrichment, the personal enrichment that you have to collaborate with such huge traditions and experts in what they do, which is something that's really uh, enriches a lot the work and our life in general. Um, another example in product is Moi. Moi is, uh, as you know, the company Marcel founded uh, 18 years ago, I think almost 20 years ago. Uh, and it's a company that really is the studio and Moi's sister's company, Marcel founded, and he does our direction for it. And uh, we designed for Moi also, of course, but it's interesting because Moi also collaborates with a lot of other designers. And this image, for instance, is one of the most clue interesting images to speak about collaboration because it's a mega chandelier that we did uh, in Moi that reunites all the lamps of different designers together to create a chandelier, which is a chandelier installation. So we put together all the lights that we have in the Moi catalog. And together, we collaborate to create this unique chandelier, which is a beautiful symbol to start uh, the, Moi, the Moi discussion. Uh, of course, Marcel was very smart and bright because he's a designer, but of course, he founded Moi into the idea of also creating a brand that also works with other designers and, and allows the most crazy ideas of other designers to become alive ideas that maybe other companies would not do. So uh, as you see, here's different slides of Moi, lamps, wallpapers, and sofas and carpets, because of course, Moi nowadays became more lifestyle brand. We just don't do just furniture or lighting. We're doing so many other products that creates a whole environment from carpets to wallpaper, to furniture, to lighting, to accessories. So it's very interesting on how to show the collection, uh, how today become really a company that collaborates with a lot of other companies and designers. And of course, uh, advertisement has been also a very strong character of Mo in the years. This is a collaboration we did with a 3D artist that created this underwater crazy environments of Moi pieces. We collaborated with Erwin Olaf, a very famous photographer in the Netherlands to create these characters based on Moi objects that really gives a uh, strong personality to the projects. And this is an accessory collection that is a ceramic collection and is the Delft Blue. Delft Blue is, is based on the historical uh, company of Delft, which is a city in the Netherlands, uh, that since the 1600s, they would do paint this beautiful blue uh, cobalt uh, classical painting flowers. And with Moy, we decided to design with the studio this very contemporary, uh, vases in shape and to combine them with this kind of historical tradition. So what we like a lot is to bring back the heritage and craftsmanship, but to give it a twist today to make it really contemporary and to not just revive something from the past without adding something, of course, from our perspective. Um, and another interesting uh, aspect of collaborations 
is collaborations within companies. Moi became a brand now that is collaborating with other companies in order to create collections which are not it's not are not part of their core core business. So with Moi we're doing hotel amenities, so soaps and shampoos. We're doing home fragrances. We're doing little books and um, uh, paper books and so on. We're doing also sunglasses. So Moi is really now open. We do wallpaper and carpets, which are also collaboration. So collaboration between a brand that has a strong, uh, a strong meaning on and vision of why they do things, and then connected with companies that does that are very strong in doing what they do. So for instance, sunglasses. Moi would never do that without a partner that does that. So strategic collaboration with brands on creating ex excellent uh, collection on the same type of level, also of course in the same type of uh, bit of uh, twisted uh, uh, look and feel. So it's interesting uh, for this. And Moi is one chapter. Another uh, beautiful thinking of collaboration of a project we just did, we work with the Corte, which is a beauty brand from Japan, we since 10 years we work with them creating cosmetics and creams and makeup. And Baccarat, which is a crystal producer for a brand of France for 250 years, and we put them together. We created a collection between the court and Baccarat. And the court, the beauty brand, wanted to do a super exclusive cream, uh, a skincare, a skincare cream. And of course, they asked us, can we connect with Baccarat so we can create a an amazing podium and product to put our cream and then uh, be in Europe connected with Baccarat. So we created all this collaboration with the two brands, super exclusive brands, uh, very with a long heritage, with a really strong craftsmanship in the skincare and in the crystal. So the, the, the link, I mean, the characteristic and DNA of both companies also were very much alike. And that's very important when you do such connections. So in the process, as we designed, we went to the factory, we created the pot and we created the most amazing crystal piece in order to put the cream inside. And also in this case, you see how much important it is the collaboration that we had with Baccarat in the factory and collaborating with the big, with the uh, most important craftsmanship of crystals in generation. So you go there, you work with them day and night because it's never ending until you get to the final result of the amazing crystal piece. I'll show you a little video also of this collaboration, which we did. We also are creating these videos that you are seeing. We create them in the studio for our clients, really to support our, our concepts and to support the collaborations as much as possible. True inner beauty is born from nature. Rare ingredients, carefully selected, combined to protect and rejuvenate, backed by research, perfected by technology, the ultimate skincare. Then, a vision. A concept is given life. As inspiration takes shape, a partnership is ignited. Centuries of craftsmanship align. to forge something iconic with a passion for every detail, every cut of crystal to be perfect. Three brands, three traditions of luxury now united in beauty. So, hope you all could see the movie. Of course, this is the final piece of the cream inside and back it up together, uh, coming in such a beautiful. Of course, there is also some 
signs and language of the studio that, are, that embeds the projects that you really see the three brands coming together. Um, so after product design, of course, we would have a lot of other topics about collaborations, but I want to quickly uh, speak about interior design because interior design is a, it's a much more complex expertise in product design. You have one idea, you have collaboration, of course, in interior design, uh, it's many more collaboration that has to come together with architects, with the operators, with the operators of food and beverage, with all different type of, 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 uh, of players that comes together. So I want quickly just to show you a few interior designs where collaborations are important. Of course, in this one, this, this case was Massimo Bottura because I think that when we design restaurants and uh, food and beverage bars and restaurants, of course, the connection and collaboration with the, with the chef is extremely important because, of course, uh, for the chef, the restaurant is a place that reflects them, but their, 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 their culture of food, and it needs really to work also very well operationally. So there is beautiful connection and collaboration that that are born when we work with this kind of, uh, of experts in their field. In this case, it was Potura, the Francescana, and we designed the restaurant. And of course, you learn also, go there and learn how they see the world of food. And it's amazing how you can then respond to that within an interior design. Uh, in Mondrian Doha, in, uh, in this, this restaurant, of course, Wolf, Wolfgang Pock uh, restaurant, we, we, we also had to understand how the kitchen would work, how the open kitchen and the service would be open, also the reception. So there is all a, a way of collaborating with, of course, the operators and chefs, which is extremely important, but also to express in interior design uh, what their food and cuisine is about. Uh, same goes, of course, to bars. In this case, also bar in Doha, we really collaborate with the most expert uh, cocktail makers and bar and bar bartenders in order to really create a, a perfect uh, display, but also perfect set for them to work and to express as best they can uh, with their drinks. And um, same, same, of course, in this case, Ibero Star Grand Porto News, another restaurant, of course, is in Mallorca. So if you see here, you see it's it's very uh, it's very rooted. In the local culture, not only in materials, colors, the tag, the solejos, but also the mood and feel of a place for a restaurant needs to, to really reflect what the cuisine is about and what the restaurant is about. The third part of the studio uh, work is our direction. And I think our direction is the most important area where you collaborate, because of course, being our director for brands. It's about product design, it's about interior design, it's about photography, it's about copies, about marketing, it's about everything that surrounds creativity that you can direct, but you cannot do anything on your own. You always have to surround yourself with better people, best people on their field in order to make your vision uh, very strong. And that's very important in our direction. Always really collaborate with the best people you have in their fields. So our direction, one example is the Rijks Museum book I was mentioning. Marcel created this book, and it's a limited edition book. There is a coffee table book, but there is also a limited edition book, and it's a, an amazing book that speaks about the golden age uh, and the masters of the Rijks Museum in, in Amsterdam. Uh, and it was very interesting because we collaborate with the most amazing printers of books of the Vatican in Italy. We collaborate with the most amazing uh, um, calligraphy artists in order to create the book and uh, and it was an amazing work which really was even very much crafted again going back to how to craft the book in, in the old way but with a new uh, meaning and content and and the most amazing thing also is that within the book this book has a has a look at art in a very different way that you would see in an art book because if you see the book you will see details scaled up of painting. So basically you see a, a, a little square of a painting blown up 500%. So you see a different scale of art, but also in the book, there are 30 leaders in the creative field. For instance, Angela Missoni that wrote a little uh, testimonial about how the, how the 
the Dutch art of the golden age was still very important. So the Rembrandt of Vermeer was still very important in today's work, in their work, or in today's creative field. And then, for instance, we have Anthony Corbin also that really created this beautiful text about, uh, about this topic. So again, we collaborate with experts, with, with craftsmanship, with artists to create this amazing artwork. And then um, the Corte is the beauty brand that we saw before, the one that collaborated with Bacala. And I wanted to show you because this is the most complex work we are creating since 10 years, collaboration that we have since 10 years, uh, in which we do product design, advertisements, stores, shopping shops. We are creating all the world around beauty and the products of the brand, which is very interesting because in this case also, we'll show you, I'll show you some of the products we do. Uh, these are makeup collection, skincare collection, other skincare collection, of course, uh, that we design. But of course, it's beautiful because it's a collaboration within cultures, Japan, Netherlands are coming together. So also the differences between cultures and how to collaborate with different cultures is extremely interesting. It's, it's, it's very difficult sometimes, but if you, if you bypass that difficult moment, then you can reach results which are completely mind blowing. So it's, uh, it's very interesting. And of course we collaborate again, in this case, as you've seen the slides to do the uh, advertisements, uh, beauty advertisements. We work with amazing photographer, directors. This is uh, Effin Olaf, and we create all the imagery around our products. All the images that I've been showing you today, or the videos, are really uh, made with external collaborations or within the studio. And these are some of the advertisements we did. Of course, based on our on our products, is the perfume for the brand, this is skincare, and. Uh, and so this is this is a bit of the result of a very complex collaboration that lasts since uh, very long. Also, the important I think thing to say is that the collaboration we have in the studio, most of them are really long lasting. So we really get to know each other almost as a second family, and we work together since more than ten years, fifteen years, twenty years sometimes, and that's 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 beautiful. Those collaborations means relationships and relationships which are long lasting are the best ones. And this on the court again, we, of course, we created all a brand movie and then we traveled the world uh, to create this, uh, this brand movie in four corners of the world with the best directors and this huge crew. And we traveled four corners in the world to express beauty connected to nature. So how nature and how nature can be supporting the concept of beauty in their not a negative power, but the beautiful power that nature can have. Of course, this is a bit of a kind of overview of the results and uh, kind of the project. Uh, of course, it's a beautiful imagery, uh, the amazing photographers, amazing director. And again, without them, we could not achieve everything that you see today. And most of the times you see Marcel Wanders, Marcel Wanders Studios and the work we do. But again, it's very important to, to praise and to be grateful for all the amazing people that makes this possible. Because without them, we would be nothing. And flagship stores, this is still the court, it's just a case which is very broad, of course. Uh, again, this is a flagship stores where we did in uh, Shanghai and Tokyo, and they're going to roll it up, roll it them out in, in the world. It's a, it's a very, very rich, of course, luxurious type of approach. And it's interesting because in this, in these stores, we also create the design, interior design, but also we collaborate with a lot of technological people in order to how to, in order to evolve the experience and journey of a beauty retail store where today, and of course in the last year with the pandemic uh, problems on how to create new experiences for the customer. So how to try lipsticks and beauty on the skin without having to use them. So how to create use hologram or mirrors that you can choose lipstick and that suddenly you have lipstick with augmented reality 
or your makeup with augmented reality. And so you can just tweak and change the color and you see yourself in that way and so on. So also collaborating with the technology, which is always in our work, a bit behind the scene, I think is very important. So uh, beside the craft is also to innovate and to look also not only at the, at the heritage craft, but also to innovate with technology is very important. In our case, we don't want to show it. We, we would rather have it a bit hidden on the background. Marcel used to say, uh, we are, sorry, uh, we are poet. We are poets secretly engineering. So we want to be smart. We want to innovate. We want to use technology, but we don't want to make it our first purpose. We always have it on the background, hidden, not in the face of people, because it's not what is important to us, but it's important, of course, to innovate with uh, state of the art. And therefore, even in that case, uh, technology and in, 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 even in that case you of course need to surround you with the best people in such fields so in a way this is the store I wanted to quickly show you and uh, this I think we uh, we arrived to the end of our presentation and I would love to uh, now send show you a video which uh, speaks about our direction so that a bit resumes the art direction part uh, with different clients, with several art direction related videos for, uh, for, the, for Starbucks, for other clients. So let me play it for you. We are what drives us, motivates us, inspires us. An approach that starts with insight, with multidisciplinary minds from around the world to tell a story. Touching all our senses in engaging ways to make a lasting impression. We celebrate art and all of its direction. We are in our element, working with any element, any medium, any space, in any direction. 360 degrees, overseeing everything from beginning to end. Guiding the process, pushing the work, elevating brands and ourselves. Executing at the highest level, shaping, collaborating for one shared goal. We remove boundaries to allow for the surprising, the daring, the bold. Through our process, we become poets. We capture the beauty of an idea. Then we share it with the world. So everyone, thank you so much for being here today. I hope that you enjoyed our little presentation. Uh, I hope that you understand the complexity behind the work that we do, but in design in general. And, and I, again, I was grateful that Beth also proposed the collaboration theme because it's something that is very hard, very, very rarely underlined. It's always a bit behind the scenes and I think it's important for you to understand how the world of creativity works and how precious and enriching is to collaborate with people. Uh, I always believe that when you ask design and art and so on, and I think, I think art is, uh, to me, is more, more, more uh, individual almost and more self-expressing than design. Design is, is something that is about collaboration because we design for people, but also we collaborate to create these designs with the industry, with uh, marketing, with companies, with brands. Brands has their own identity that you have to 
connect and cooperate and with experts, with technology, with technology, with engineers. It's a world which is made of collaborations and without these collaborations, there will not be design. I think it's uh, very important to, to underline once again this. And beside this, once last, last thing I want to again uh, make important is that the most valuable thing in our work or in my work and my experience in the studio is that being doing so many things and so many different projects in so different contexts, the most beautiful and things that I'm grateful for is the collaborations that I had in these years with all these amazing people. We are generalists, we have a vision which is very general, and we collaborate with the best industries and companies in the world, which means we collaborate with the most important, the most, most great people and experienced people in their field, and, we're, and we are enriching ourselves each day with their knowledge. And I think that's the most beautiful thing that uh, design has brought me and Marcel van der Studios brought me in my experience in my years. So thank you so much again. Uh, I think that we we are just in time for probably some questions. If you guys have questions, of course, I'm not sure if uh, Lisa, you have some. Yes, yes, Gabriela, thank you for that beautiful presentation and and sharing your perspective on collaboration. We really appreciate it. We're going to jump over to questions from the audience. So students, definitely feel free to submit those. Uh, while you're sending those over, just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Alyssa Young. I work as the director of Be Original Americas. So I see we have a number of great questions that have come in. We're gonna try and get through as many as we can. Um, one recurring theme that seems to be coming through in the Q&A is this question of collaboration during the pandemic. You know, how has that changed for collaborating internationally with your clients, with your team, uh, how you work to make prototypes in that remote type of environment. Could you tell us more about that? Of course, very good question. Very interesting because design is also made by connection and prototypes and meeting. And we were used to a way of doing, which is of course, historical way of each time going and having a dinner with client and connecting some prototypes and traveling a lot. And then finally the pandemic arrived and we had to adapt. You know, humankind is a species which is extremely adaptable to, uh, to changes, I must say. And I think we adapted really fast and really well. Uh, and of course, in the studio, we work, uh, we, we are in the studio sometimes, so we manage to work a lot with uh, Miro. Miro is one, one software that is amazing that we, we find each other in the platform, which is virtual as a brainstorm room and is always there. So. In a way, I'm, I must say that technology and this detachment brought us more efficiency and more speed, which I'm not sure it's always great, but I think it's been, uh, it's been great. Of course, with client also, uh, connect, we connected a lot. And we also realized a very important thing is that before the pandemic, we were a bit maybe too lazy to use this technology and we were traveling the world left and right. And, and now we realize that maybe also for the wellness of our planet, maybe 70% of the travels we were doing, they're not necessary. We can connect with the screen, discuss something. Of course, it's important the social connection with the clients, it's important to go and see prototypes. But I realized how much useless travels I was doing before. And I'm happy that this is not the case anymore. So just to pick the really important ones, do them, and then also you know, save a bit the plant uh, without uh, so many movements. Right. Taking a step back for a moment and talking mm -hmm. about your career journey, what drew you to Marcel Wander's studio and to Amsterdam? So my career journey, I, as Pat was saying, I was in diplomat family, so grew up a bit all over the world, Africa, South America, Italy. And at a certain point, I came to the Netherlands and I really loved the the polarity between the creative Italian way of mindset uh, design and the Dutch one. It, Italian is very rooted in the industry and mass production. The Dutch one is really rooted in the more artistic approach of limited edition and galleries. So the two polarities together, I think enrich me a lot. And then uh, 
also the Italian approach because the studio had a lot of Italian clients. So it was really, really well, uh, it fitted really well. Of course, with Marcel, we are now since 14 years together. So it's a really strong friendship. And, um, and I think that's, that's how, how, how I came to Milan. So for before Marcella was in Milano and I was working in Milano since already I was studying, I was already working with Alessi, creating some workshops. So I think it's very important that from the study, you start as soon as possible to connect with the reality of the industry or production or, you know, start doing something because I think it helps both ways, it helps your studies and helps the fact of understanding what the studies say. So it's very important to, to do this as soon as possible. And uh, that's, yeah, that's how, how I came to the Netherlands, more or less. Perfect, thank you for sharing. Could you please share your process um, of how the design concept is created and developed further for each client? Design concept? Yes. Well, design concepts depends of, I mean, when you do design, you never, you always have someone to do the design with. It's like a relationship, as I was saying, it's a like collaboration. You, otherwise you're an artist, you can do your little sculpture. It's a design, what? Design as we mean it is always with someone. So it's a company, design company, it's an operator, it's a brand of a hotel. So the first thing, of course, is to understand well who you have in front of you. It's like, I mean, it's like a date, you need to understand the partner or it's a, like a relationship. In order to create a beautiful project, you need to know each other pretty well. So I think that's the first step to really understand what the company is about, why they're doing, why they want to work with you, what could you be bringing to them? I mean, explore really all the facets of the collaborations. And then of course, once that's done, it's about response, responding to, uh, to a request that they have to you, to need, and therefore then starting brainstorming with the team. We always have multi, multidisciplinary people on board. And then we create, uh, we create a concept that always has a really strong uh, storytelling. It's very important. I mean, without, without a soul, without a story, without a really strong concept, without an idea, it's just styling. It's just, it's just style. I mean, there's enough chairs in the world in order to create another one. But if you start creating a chair which has meaning uh, be, because of, uh, of celebrating a craftsmanship, because of celebrating a story, because of, you know, then, then there is meaning in design. I think that everything, every project we do, we, are, we make sure that there is a strong idea behind, there's a strong uh, storytelling behind, there is strong uh, roots in order for the project to grow and to grow in time. Great. As a designer, how much knowledge should one have about the workings of different fields in order to collaborate efficiently? Well, design, that's, that's an interesting question because most of the time design, designers, they think also in the late, in the late uh, decades, they're aware you have the star designers. And it looks much more to an artistic approach. You're a designer, you do design something. But designers in the history, they were just architects or engineers that they had to know the industry. And I'm not saying that you have to be an expert. To, to, to do something, but for instance, glass or crystal or blowing, that blowing glass, blowing crystal. Uh, there are people that does that since centuries and, the, and the, the, the expertise didn't change so much. So before designing, you can't design something in glass if you don't know how glass works or if you don't know how the blow making works because it's impossible. So uh, when we did it and start years ago, years ago to to, to, to from crystal to glass. So you have to spend time in the furnaces and go there and check and look and, and work with the master blowers in order to maybe be a little bit better than them and not better than them, but to add something to, to them because they are masters and to be able to create something which, is, uh, which makes sense. So in a way, knowledge, don't try to be knowledgeable as the experts but try to learn from the expert what that's what they can give you in order for having the right tools to design. Great. 
How have you changed your design process or adapted to the pandemic, post-pandemic psychology of people? Have you, sorry, can you repeat that? If I adapted my design process? Due to the pandemic surrounding the psychology of people. Hmm, not sure if I really get the question. Uh, if we change, well, we, we, we kind of, for instance, I think that in interior design, um, the pandemic showed us, for instance, one, one perception is that showed us that people are in necessity of more uh, nature, well-being, wellness, cleanness, and, and nature in general in the project. So the biophilic design thinking that is now kind of trendy uh, is something that we always did in the past. We always worked with nature in our projects, whether it is real nature or whether it is um, styled nature. So to bring the beauty of nature, whether it's a beautiful mosaic with plants and flowers or uh, stylistically fake trees, not fake trees, but sculptures that reminds trees. To us, it's always been important to bring that beauty into our projects. And of course, nowadays we see that the psychology of people wanting to have more uh, nature in the project, for instance, could be one of the set, but we didn't really change our, our way of designing. I don't think that's, uh, no, I don't think that it, it really maybe was an accelerator, but it didn't change so much. It's an interesting point to bring up. Well, we are almost out of time. I apologize if we did not get to your question. We had so many wonderful questions submitted, but one final question that we do have. Any last words of advice or wisdom that you have for the students tuning in today? Yes, uh, be, a, be a child again. Be a child. Be you know, the most important, there are a few important things in, in, this, in, this, in this field is one, no, maybe a few, let's say two or three. One is to not be self-centered on what you do, but just think that we are here to, to design for people. We are here to serve people. In the most beautiful way that we can imagine, poetically, emotionally wise, functionally wise, we're here to, to bring gifts and beauty to people and beauty to their life. So that's the first important thing we always have to put ahead. I think a second thing is really to be as much open-minded as possible culturally with differences. Diversity is an extremely rich, rich value that you have to always keep uh, near to your heart. Diversity is what makes you better, richer, greater. And uh, I think it's very important. And then always question yourself because, you know, once you, once you reach a point that you think you know it all and then not being able to question yourself would be a missed opportunity. Always like learn from your people, understand different ways to do it. And the third and last one is to be, and I was saying to be a kid again, is the curiosity, to be curious, a kid, when is, is, is growing, explores a world that he doesn't know. We are, as designers, we're creating the unknown. We are creating something that doesn't exist. And therefore, I believe that we really, really have to be as curious as a kid of five years old to, to, to try to, 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 to question everything that you have around. You know, when kids say, why, 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 why? Well, as a designer, do so. Even when you're 30, 40, 50, just be curious, look around you and question things around you and maybe try to see how can you improve them or add to them. And curiosity is the most important element of being creative and designers, I believe. And then of course, to have fun as a kid is also a big part of it. Absolutely, wonderful advice. Well, students, I wanted to say thank you for taking the time to tune in today. If you want to learn more about Be Original Americas or Marcel Wander Studio, there should be links in the chat for the website and Instagram channels. Gabriele, thank you so much for this presentation and an inside look at the studio. We really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, Lisa, Beth, Be Original, thank you so much for having us. And thank you so much for let us opening the first amazing session that you're going to have. And I'm sure you're going to be greater as greater as you've always been. And thank you so much for our students to have taken the time to be with us today. Great. Thank you so much. Well,